along the same vein of the, of the false prophets, we see warnings being given. And, and warnings are given all throughout the New Testament, especially on the false prophets. We see the Apostle Paul in his epistles is warning about these people very frequently. And we're going to see a warning here in 2 Corinthians 11 as well. We see, we're going to go turn to Galatians a little bit later. We're going to see a similar warning. Um, because of the amount of damage that false prophets can do. So understanding whether or not uh, a teacher or prophet is saved is very important. Look at verse number 1 of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. The Bible reads, Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So he's worried about the church at Corinth, about someone coming in and beguiling their mind, just like Eve was beguiled of the serpent, and, and, and leading them astray from the simplicity which is in Christ. And, you know, the simplicity is that Jesus paid it all. It's all, all salvation is through him alone. You start complicating and frustrating the gospel of Christ when you start adding works to it and adding other caveats. Well, you got to do this, you got to do that. Well, you could only do this, and, you know, if you... If you, if, you know, you got to believe, but believing is not enough because you also have to be baptized or you also have to be circumcised or whatever the case is. You start frustrating it. The gospel is real simple. Christ paid for all of your sins and you got to receive Christ as your Savior. You got to put your faith in him. It's real simple. Really simple. It can be explained in, t in, in one verse. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. That's simple. But the warning is going out for, for he that cometh, for the person that might come in, for someone who's going to come in to the flock, come in to the church and preach another Jesus. So it's going to be a Jesus, but it's not the Jesus of the Bible. So they're preaching another Jesus. They're going to want it to sound like they're preaching Jesus. They're going to make it look really close to Jesus, but it's another Jesus whom we have not preached. And that's not the same Jesus we preach. And look, someone might have a lot of similarities, but if someone's preaching another Jesus, they're not saved. If you have a different Jesus, and, it, and you know, I, this is one of the things I try to explain to the cults, the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, like, you're believing in a different Jesus. That's another Jesus. You're not believing in God incarnate. You're believing in just a man that's not deity. That's another Jesus. And we start messing around with, that's one of the reasons why we're doing the whole, I've been doing a series on, on, you know, more about Jesus, is identifying the Jesus that we preach, the Jesus that we believe in. Because when people start making up other Jesuses, that's not the Jesus I believe in. If you're putting all your faith in one person, you better have that right, that, you know, the right Savior. It's not good enough just to have a Savior. It has to be the Savior. It has to be Jesus Christ. It has to be the Jesus of the Bible. And Satan has so many ways of trying to get people astray and to corrupt the simplicity that is in Christ. And he'll use all means necessary to be able to do that. Um, taking the word of God and corrupting it. Right, and just changing it and, and leading people astray that way. And, and you know, so many different ways. I'm not going to get into all that right now. But then it says, or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So watch out for the people who are coming in, bringing in a different spirit, bringing in a different Jesus, bringing in a different gospel, and mark and avoid and just be like, no, we're not going to have anything to do with that because these people aren't saved. 